Hello everyone! Our mission on the Broken Isles is to get our hands on the Pillars of Creation to seal the rift at the tomb of Sargeras. Within High Mountain, the Hammer of Kaskarov awaits, and that's the story we're going to talk about today, so let's begin, shall we? High Mountain is named after Huln High Mountain, a legendary hero during the War of the Ancients, who was blessed by none other than Cenarius, which led to him and his people having these mighty antlers on their heads. For generations, High Mountain has kept the Pillar of Creation safe, but everything changed when the Legion attacked. The tribes of High Mountain, namely Skyhorn, Rivermane, Blood Totem, High Mountain and even the leader of the Drogbar, called Dargrul, they've gathered for a meeting. Mela, daughter of the chieftain of the High Mountain tribe, she witnessed the counterattack of the Horde and Alliance upon the Broken Shore. She has seen how we got our asses kicked and failed, but Spiritwalker Ebonhorn, he's received a vision from the spirits. He tells them that his vision has shown him champions, not from High Mountain picking up the hammer, empowering them against the Legion, and all the people of an undivided High Mountain shall aid them, and the Burning Legion shall fall. Dargru has also seen a vision, but all he saw was strength, strength to drive back the Legion, and he saw nothing of outsiders claiming the hammer. He believes that he should be the one to wield the hammer, so he jumps up and grabs it, starting a war with the other clans, but with this powerful titan and artifacts, none can stand against him, and Mela's father is murdered. Dargru makes his escape as he works amassing the hammer, and Mela, despite her grief raging in her hearts, she realizes that they have to reclaim the artifact, have to unite against his threats, but the leaders of the other clans, they're scared. The clans of High Mountain are now divided, and without the hammer, there can be no unity. Mela figures that if the hammer is truly what brings them together, then she will do everything in her power to get it back. And that's where our story at the High Mountain begins, as Warbrave Oro shows up in Dalaran to request our aid with recovering the hammer. Come, champion. Journey with me, and I shall show you the might of High Mountain. Champion, the Warbrave has good intentions, I think. Quickly now, after him. His people are your best chance at an ally on that mountain. Welcome, champion, to Thunder Totem. In better days, we would have warriors from the Blood Totem tribe, or eagle riders from the Skyhorn tribe. Today, we are so few we could barely keep a kobold out. I am Mela, daughter of the late High Chieftain Ulan, and I... I speak for the tribes. Mela informs us about what happened today, that they lost the hammer and their chieftain, and now the Drogbar are raiding the Rivermain tribe. She does not have enough Warbraves to stand out for aid, so we're asked to be a hero and do it for her. At Earth Mother's Bounty, we meet up with Jill Rivermain, chieftain of the Rivermain tribe, who asked of us to kill Ormgul, who's using the alchemy to bring bugs to their land. Next to that, we also destroy some of the Drogbar poison idols, and we slay a couple of the overgrown larvae and diseased grubs. Afterwards, we travel to the fisheries, where we save a couple of their people, we kick some fish back into the water, and we use the Drogbar's bug spray against them. It's no accident that the Rivermain tribes are being attacked, it's their farms and their pastures that supply food for the region in exchange for protection. That's how High Mountain works, together they are strong, but divided they are vulnerable. Now after taking care of the drug bar at the fisheries, we move on to kicking the drug bar out of the Life Spring Cavern. This is where the Rivermain practice their water magic and get much of the purest healing water in High Mountain. We take on Gelmog, who's trying to draw the power into himself, but as we do, Darkru himself shows up. Are these Ronir giving you too much trouble, Gelmog? Perhaps I misjudged your worth. When you're done with this distraction, meet us in Rivermen! With the power of the hammer, Dargrul transforms Gelmog, increasing his power, but together we are able to bring him down, and Jill was certain that she heard him mention Riverbend. That's her home, so we quickly go there to warn the villagers of the Underking's arrival, and we evacuate them before any harm comes to them. By this hammer! I CLAIM THIS MOUNTAIN! With one single strike of the hammer, Riverband is utterly destroyed. We have one good fortune in all of this. It's not much, but it is that Dargrul does not have knowledge on how to use the hammer. He keeps thinking it of a weapon instead of a tool of creation. It's not much, but at least we're not facing the full potential of the hammer. Now destroying Riverband was not enough. Dargrul also sends his raiders out to take what is left. We're sent to slay enough of them to break the resolve, while also freeing Oro, Jill and Okin from the stone fists that are holding them. My... My village, it is gone. 
We can't let Dark Rule get away with this. We have to stop him before it's too late. So within an old Drogbar enclave that they used to trade with the Drogbar, we join Otto and his Warbraves as they confront the Underking. Dark Rule the Underking! Come down here you and face justice for me. those- <laughs> My Underking, this one still lives. I want this Sean Ronier to tell the others. Tell them their doom will come once I master this hammer. Oro was brave, but he didn't even have enough time to finish his speech before Dark Rule stuck a spike through his heart. It is clear now that we'll need the full might of the High Mountain tribes if we want to stand a chance at recovering the hammer. Our last High Chieftain, Ulan, tried to stop him and was slain. Mela may have picked up her father's totem, but she is not High Chieftain yet. Dargrel didn't just steal a hammer. He shattered our people, driving a wedge between our tribes. It's up to us to reunite High Mountain. The Rivermane tribe is back into the fold, but we also need the Skyhorn, the Blood Totem, and Mela, she needs to understand what it means to be a High Chieftain. We are the lucky ones that get to help out with all of this, so we fly out to meet with Lassan Skyhorn, Chieftain of the Skyhorn tribe. He knows where we have come, but Drogbar are not the only threats living in High Mountain. They can't send forces to support until we deal with High Kraliak and her minions. They're causing all kinds of trouble, from lighting the village on fire, to cursing the eagles into vile rocks, so we go about putting out the fires, saving the eagles, but also killing a fair few of the harpies. With that done, we're ready to focus on the leader, so we make our way up the mountain, we kill Raggi the Hexar, Agara Defsong and Ugla the Hag, and finally we take out High Kraliak, the Witch Queen herself. <laughs> now that was a battle! Helping out the Skyhorn tribe has earned us the respect of Lassan, and we have free passage to travel through their lands. Back at Thunder Totem, Lassan swears his allegiance to young Mela. I'm I'm not one for ceremony, so let's get this over with. I have already ordered my eagle riders to make for Thunder Totem. You may find the air a bit thicker with feathers soon. Let it be known that I, Lasan Skyhorn, Chieftain of the Skyhorn Tribe, once again declare my allegiance to High Mountain. Together, we are High Mountain! Next up is trying to bring back the Blood Totem tribe, so we fly out to meet with Oak and Iron Bull, an emissary of the Riverbend tribe that we saved after Dark Rule's attack. He's willing to vouch for us because we saved his life, and the Blood Totem have been given a no-kill order with him at our side. In order to even talk with Chieftain Torok, we'll have to prove ourselves by killing the Witch of the Wood and bring back her carcass while also dealing with a fair few of the other harpies and bring back the feathers as proof of death. As we talk with Oaken, we can see that the Blood Totems have taken a Drogbar captive, Navarak of the Stone Dark, who knows that we have no reason to trust him. His cousins, led by Dark Rule, have gone mad with power, but he still asks of us to investigate something. He has a feeling something terrible is to befall High Mountain, and that Torok and his Blood Totem are going to be responsible. It can't hurt to check it out, so after taking care of the Harpies within the Witchwood, we go out to check on Navarok's lead. Turns out that the blood totem have been up to no good. On a table, we find a spilled horn and some leftover demon blood, with a couple of dead blood totems surrounding it. A warmonger quickly storms in and tells us to get away from it, but something isn't quite right. There are even two of them talking about what they must give in return. And what, Gul'dan, must we give in return everything? and it doesn't even seem too bad to them. Navarok has been taken out of his cage, and Okin is still oblivious, even when we're told to go down into a cave to meet with Torok. He thinks that perhaps it's a good sign that they're putting us through a rite of passage. Down below, we place the carcass on an altar, and we defeat a warmonger in single combat. He went easy on you, outsider. Come, speak. Torok doubts that we could even lift the Hammer of Kaskarov, let alone wield it, but if we want free passage through the lands, we must complete the rite of blood. He tells us to enter the depths of the cave and defeat whatever foe may appear. Something about this doesn't seem right. I've got a bad feeling about this. Oh, be <laughs> careful. This is a trap. Ah! 
the Blood Totem have allied themselves with the Burning Legion, as Marakan shows up and one-shots Okin. A fierce battle for our lives follows, with Navara calling in reinforcements to aid us. A cheap trick calling for reinforcements. You're unworthy of this mountain! Navarok didn't try to escape before, since he feared that the Blood Totem, or Fell Totem as they're now called, that they would attack his cave and slaughter his people. It seems like that's what they planned to do all along, so it's time to show the Fell Totem that allying with the Legion was a very bad idea. We go out to search for Navarok's crystalline focus, we resurrect some of his earthly friends, and we slay some of the Tauren. With that done, it's time to take the battle to the Chieftain himself, and show him what happens to those who mess with the prophesized outsider. Don't let them cross that bridge or I'll have your hides. We are Blood Totem. Would you let the weak overcome us? Torok will not trouble the Stone Dark again. Let's head to the homeland of my people. Welcome to Stone Dark Grotto. Doesn't look like much, but it's our home. Here, we live in peace, away from the other Drogbar. Stone Dark, I have returned. We have this one to thank for saving us from the Blood Totem. Not all Drogbar are as violent as the savages led by Dark Rule the Underking, nor are all Tauren as bloodthirsty as the Blood Totem. In a strange turn of events, we failed to recruit the Blood Totem, yet by helping Navarok, we've earned their trust and gained the allegiance of the Stone Dark Drogbar. I am nervous about entering this place. Best hurry in before they change their mind about allowing me safe passage. I, Navarog, leader of the Stone Dark Drogbar, declare my allegiance to the High Mountain tribe. Together, we are High Mountain! High Mountain stands united. We have gained troops and allies, but what we need now is a leader. Mela may have picked up her father's totem, but she's no High Chieftain, not before she has honored the tradition of walking the path of Hul. We need to be out there searching for the hammer. Tradition can wait. Mela, this is something your father made me promise I would do for you. Please, your people need this. You need this. Armies are vital to the success of war, but so are symbols. To their people, few things make for a better symbol than the blessing of their most eldest ancestor. The path is dangerous, and she may only bring two people with her, a spirit walker to guide her, in this case Ebonhorn, and a champion to protect her. It's interesting to note that during beta times, this was actually where you could find the difference of the zone between the Alliance and the Horde. For the Horde, it was Bane Bloodhoof, who would also join you on this adventure, but for the Alliance, it was actually Bran Bronzebeard. There is another major change to this quest, but we'll talk about that when we get there. For home, the War of the Ancients did not end at the Well of Eternity. With the Legion defeated, he focused on the monster that got away. Welcome, my friends, to the Vault of Neltharion, or as the world came to know him, Deathwing. Stand your ground, Warbraves! You dare challenge me! The Black Dragon Deathwing, also known as Nelfarian, was originally empowered with the blessing of the Titans to safeguard the land. Over the ages, he listened to the whispers of the Old Gods, and their corruption took hold of his mind and spread throughout his entire Black Dragon flight. During the War of the Ancients, he convinced his fellow Aspects to imbue an artifact called the Dragon Soul, later to be known as the Demon Soul, with a portion of their power. They planned to use this against the invading Legion forces, but under the influence of the Old God, Deathwing did not only fire at the demons, he also took shots at the Knight of Resistance and even his fellow dragons. At the end of the war, the Demon Soul actually played a key part at sealing the gateway and was then hidden away only to resurface and be used by the orcs many, many years later. Now you might remember during the Cataclysm, we actually went back in time to the War of the Ancients time period. We picked up the disc and then Thrall used it in the fight against Deathwing. It seems like Huln was not ready to let the Black Dragon aspect go after the War of the Ancients as he ventured into the vault. Ah, my people did not make this goblin trash. We only strapped it to that worm's hide. No weapon of mortal make can penetrate these metal plates. Then we must find weapons not made by mortals. Igrul. Is there any tool or trinket that Deathwing kept from your people? 
Something he would not trust you to touch. Hmm. I may know of something. These metal plates that are talking about, that's because using the demon soul did not come without consequences. This is how the War of the Ancients novel described it. The Earth Warder perverted his role, transforming himself from an aspect of the world to its antithesis. As he committed his latest atrocities, Nelfarian changed further. A rip appeared in his torso, scales torn apart as if made of paper. Yet blood did not flow from the wound, but rather pure fire. Another tear formed on his chest and a third on the opposite side of the first. As if the unleashing of a plague, horrific rips materialized all over Nelfarian. The high scales on his back tore into pieces. Even to see all of this caused Coriastra's pain, but the huge black seemed not to notice. If anything, Nelfarian appeared to revel in what was happening to him. His eyes burned bright with power reflecting that of the disc, and he continued to laugh as he unleashed devastation. That is taken from the War of the Ancients trilogy. Now eventually, even the Mad Aspect knew that something had to be done about this change, so he left the battlefield and had goblins make him adamantium plates, which were then apparently installed by the enslaved Drogbar. You can even see a recreation of this moment during the Cataclysm trailer, only then Deathwing did do a little upgrade and he got himself elementium plates. This is a titan waygate. What lies beyond? A hammer! Deathwing eats any of my people who get near it. So Deathwing wants this titan hammer kept secret? Perhaps this is the weapon we need to challenge the beast. Enough stalling! We must slay the beast and set my people free! Both the Hammer and Deathwing were tools of the Titans. I doubt I could kill him, but I may be able to banish him. It is here where Hoon found the Hammer of Kaskarov, and together with the Drogbar, he used his powers to banish Deathwing into the elemental plane of Earth called Deep Home. Now Deathwing has shown up on Azeroth itself after this moment, so this banishment doesn't seem to be permanent, at least he wasn't trapped within Deep Home. Perhaps the banishment was simply meant to keep him out of High Mountain, I'm not sure, but either way, Hoon kicked the dragon out and freed the Drogbar from their enslavement, but their journey wasn't over yet. By the power of the Titans! I banish you from this land, Earth Warder! So Huln never backed down, no matter the enemy? History is forged by the hearts of heroes, child. This is the truth your father wanted you to see. Our people need a leader like Huln, one with the strength and courage to face any obstacle, qualities you have proven to possess. And so there is one final vision you must witness. This is a secret passed from High Chieftain to High Chieftain since the day Hulm banished Deathwing. These eggs are corrupted. We should destroy them now! There is more than one way to deal with Kura Guardians. They are awaking! Not all of these eggs shall survive, but those that do should be free of Deathwing's corruption. Keep them off of me just a little longer. One of the eggs is starting to hatch! Look, one survived. Such a small thing. And with little black horns, I shall call you Ebonhorn. So it was that Holm's mercy gained the allegiance of his family's oldest ally, me. What? How? The whole time? Mela, I am still the same spirit walker you have known your entire life. Know that regardless of what happens, I serve the High Chieftain. Which gives me great honor to say this next part. Mela High Mountain, I hereby pronounce you High Chieftain. Long may you stand.
Hoon used the powers of the Hammer of Kaskarov not as a weapon, but as a tool for creation. He created the first uncorrupted black dragon in history, after the madness of Deathwing, which makes poor Raphion a little bit less special. Speaking of Raphion, this is the other change that they made to the questline since beta time. In the past, it was actually Raphion who disguised himself as Ebonhorn, and he asked for our assistance as he used his powers on the X. They predated Deathwing's corruption, so he wanted to recover them and give the black dragonflight a second chance. Now, we have only one new uncorrupted black dragon, yet the hammer still exists, so the possibility of creating more uncorrupted black dragons it's definitely out there. All we need to do is find more black dragon eggs, which might be a little bit difficult since Raphion, he went about taking care of most of the black dragons. It's not impossible though, since Raphion doesn't know the location of all black dragons. A prime example is the black dragon Sibelian, who's been chilling on Outland for the longest of times, so there's definitely potential for story there. I do hope that they don't forget about Raphion, since he was the one who foresaw the coming of the Legion during Mr. Pandaria, and that was the reason why he and Kairos sent Garrosh to alternate the order to begin with. Their plan was to have Garrosh convince the Iron Horde to join us in the battle against the Legion, but instead Garrosh had his own plans. He decided to invade Azeroth himself, eventually leading to alternate Gul'dan being sent to our Azeroth, and then kicking off the invasion that Raphion foresaw and tried to arm us against. It's easy being a prophet when you kinda help make your own prophecies come true, but let's go back to the story of High Mountain, shall we? We've gathered the tribes. Mela understands what Ebonhorn has been trying to tell her for a while, that their people do not need a hammer, they need a leader. One willing to stand against any threats, even if they're terrified to do so. She is the High Chieftain, so time to take the battle to the Underking and try to claim the hammer of Kaskaro. Snowmane Village was caught completely off guard by the scale of the Drogbar attack and we need to help them out. We evacuate the children and the wounded, we slay a couple of the Mightstone Drogbar and we bring down the worms that they use to transport reinforcements. When you face the worms, call to us and we shall be there. The Rivermane, Skyhorn and Stone Dark tribes, they aid us while we fight with Naxa, Arxas and Zist. We make great progress, but they just keep coming and scouts report that some of the Drogbar, they've actually managed to sneak around our flank and they're now attacking Snowmane village. We quickly ride out to help with the evacuation, Red Skymane can't leave without Arkaya, Tarvin is trying to protect his wounded friends, but since there's no time he just picks them up and runs off, well, old Nefu doesn't give a hoot about the attacking Drogbar and he decides to stay. We've done all that we can, and not a moment too soon, since the Underking himself appears on the battlefield. Children of the Deep, rise and crush these Shanronir! It's Riverbend all over again. With the hammer of Kaskarov, Dargru wipes the village off the map. Kill now, grieve later, Lassan tells us, as we quickly jump on one of his war eagles and we rain down justice from above, bombing the Understone forces. High Mountain is united in this war and we'll make sure that the Drogbar know it. With that done, it's finally time to confront Dark Rule, but he's not ready to face us yet. Coward! There is no hole you can hide in that we cannot follow! The Hammer and the Underking have both vanished into Nelfarian's lair, so Mela and her forces, they will clear a path through this rubble and assault Dark Rule's forces directly. It will be a ruse, since Navarok proposed a plan that has merit. He knows of a side entrance that might lead directly to Dark Rule, we'll muster our allies and strike at them through this side passage, while Mela will provide the distraction we need to get a shot. Hurry, friends! Every moment we linger, Dark Rule kills more of our allies! My father's ancient lair. There is still power within these rocks that should not be disturbed. On our way to the Underking, we face off against Rokmora, Ularok's crack shaper's unfinished masterpiece. Rock! No! Break! Ularok himself, an ancient drug bar, and the Underking's trusted advisor. So this is what it feels like to break. Naraxus, mother of monsters that have been worshipped by the Drogpar since the age of Nelfarian. There is no more time! We must strike at Dargrul now! I am sorry, heroes. It appears the treasure you seek will be found on the other end of this beast. Until finally, Dargrul himself is the only one left standing. The Tauren believed you were prophesized to seize my hammer! <laughs> Pathetic. Let them come. <laughs> Witness the fate of those who stand against one worthy of wielding the power of a titan! The mountain will gnaw on your bones! How is the 
is possible! I... I was chosen. The hammer never chose you, Dargro. It seeks a wielder who possesses true strength, and you were found lacking. It's done, heroes. With Dargrul dead and the hammer reclaimed, the Grogbar are broken. Now begins the long task of reuniting our tribes, but balance has returned to High Mountain. The power of the Mad King Dargrul is broken, and High Mountain has you to thank, heroes. Now, there are other family matters that require my attention. Farewell. I hope when next we meet, it is under more peaceful circumstances. We claim victory. We claim the Hammer of Kaskarov. And Ebonhorn is going to deal with other family matters, which I really hope hints at him dealing or at least interacting with Refion. But only time will tell what the story is going to bring. When you first set foot upon our shores, I prayed to the spirits, asking if you could be trusted. By helping to reunite our tribes, you have proven yourself a true friend to our people. For us, the Hammer of Kazgaroth has always been a symbol of unity, a reminder of our proud history. But in your hands, it will serve an even greater purpose. On behalf of the tribes of High Mountain, I entrust the hammer to you and your allies. May it strike true at the heart of the enemy. The spirits whisper that our fates are intertwined. My people stand ready to aid you in the war against the Legion. Together, we are High Mountain, and they're ready to aid us in the war against the Legion. That's where we'll end the story of High Mountain, forgetting our hands on the Pillar of Creation, and one step closer to sealing the gateway at the Tomb of Sargeras. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time, guys, see ya!